Hey YouTube, it's Jay. Um, before we begin, I know it's been a little bit longer than usual on this video. Uh, I have cut this video, uh, well let's put it this way, I filmed this video and it turned into about a three hour epic video and I decided that that was probably too long uh, for many of the people watching this. So uh, I, I decided to redo it and cut it into shorter pieces. Um, the good news is that I have all of that footage from the three hours, so I'll be able to turn out the next few videos very quickly. Um, so look for uh, about once a week for the next several weeks. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we talked about environmental risk. We talked about personal risk. Now we're going to talk about shot risk and, and post-hit risk. Um, <clears throat> those two topics are inextricably combined uh, because your shot risk actually comes from your leave risk, your leave, right? So the better your leave is, the less risk there is on the shot, and that's what we want. We want to keep it less risky. Um, so when we're talking about shot risk, the very first thing that comes to mind is aiming. I am not a big believer in aiming systems once you've gotten to the point where you understand the basics. Okay, ghost ball, centered edge, edge to edge. There's an angle method. There's a there's a uh, shoot through method. Um, not a big believer in any of those. All you really need to know about aiming is that if you hit the ball on this side it goes that way if you hit it on this side it goes that way and it goes in a straight line through the center of the ball so if i hit here through the center of the ball it takes me right here that's going to go in the edge of the pocket okay that's all you really need to know once you've gotten past the very basics of how do i hit this thing i'm going to let you in on the secret to aiming <clears throat> we all talk about how precise you have to be to aim <clears throat> or when you aim um, everything out there says you have to be perfect on your aim and that uh, that when you miss you probably aimed wrong. Well, when you miss the vast majority of times, it, if you are beyond a, a, a basic bar banger, uh, the vast majority of the times you miss, you miss because of factors other than your aim. You miss because you didn't stroke through the ball. You miss because you uh, stood up early, or you miss because you tried to steer the ball into the pocket, or you missed uh, because you were distracted by something else going on around you and took your eye off the ball. Um, there are many, many reasons that you can miss a shot. Aiming is probably one of the smallest of those, and I'm going to prove that to you here real quick. So those of you that have been with the channel for a while know that I have some pretty serious vision problems. So first of all, I have double vision. I see two balls superimposed over each other. It's like you went cross-eyed and the balls are pulled slightly apart. I don't see one, I see double. Um, two, I'm extremely nearsighted. When I take my glasses off, anything beyond about two, one and a half, two feet, anything beyond that is a blur. So. Let me just show you how important that precision aiming is. Let's uh, throw a few balls in after this. Okay. Throw a few balls out randomly. That's fine. number on. I cannot, well I could make out the, the one ball but it kind of looks like a circle with just a black line through it. The nine ball, um, I can see the difference in that in the one. Uh, in the six ball I can't see at all. So let's just see how important that precision aiming is. Thank you. 
almost hurt, didn't it? So you can see, even with the balls being blobs, I can still make them. And there were some cuts there, and there was a tough English shot drawing back off the three, so I had to adjust for throw and all that stuff. But you know what? Even just being able to see round, fuzzy blobs sitting on the table, I was able to pocket all the balls and get out, right? I'm not telling you that aiming systems don't help when you're starting. And certainly, if you're unsure of a shot, it's better to be confident in the shot than it is to uh, than it is to not use an aiming system. It's, it's better to use an aiming system than to be, you know, not confident. You need confidence, okay? And actually, that's one of the reasons you miss is because you don't have confidence you're going to make the shot. So I use I use the contact point, and to, to get the contact point. I look from the center of the pocket through the center of the ball, and I see where that points at the equator of the ball. So at the at the center of the ball, where does that point? Well, okay, so right there. Okay, I've got my contact point. Now I'm going to walk over. Notice my eyes have never left that contact point. I'm going to get down now. I'm looking at this, and I'm going to look down at my cue and make sure I'm stroking straight. First two warm-up strokes, I usually don't. But once I've got a straight stroke, I'm going to look back up at the contact point, and I'm going to shoot. Okay? That is all there is to that. Now, let me tell you the trick to this. Okay? When I'm looking at this contact point, I get my contact point. I'm looking at it. I'm walking around. I'm getting to my point. I'm getting behind it now, I'm behind my contact point. Now I'm down to warm-up stroking. Now I've got a straight stroke. I look up. While I'm looking up, let me tell you what I see. I see a dark line in the felt between the cue ball and the object ball. Now that line is not caused, it, it's, it's not some weird random thing. Okay, what it is, is that I'm so focused on this point that everything that's in my line of sight between my eyes and that point are in focus and everything to the sides is, is out of focus. Okay, because I'm concentrating on that contact point. When I see that line, and, and I'll be honest, now I don't see it all the time, I used to see it every shot. Back when I was shooting on tour, it was every shot. Now, how do you develop that? You do not need a table to get that line. That line is about your, your concentration on that contact point. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking, and the longer I concentrate, the more in focus that one point is. And then when I see the line, I pull the trigger. It's that easy, okay? Now, sounds kind of meta, I want you to try it yourself. Don't shoot the ball. Put the ball at, put a ball on the table, set yourself up a pretty long shot, get behind it, okay, find your contact point, and then stand behind your shot looking through the cue ball at the contact point and just bend down low to the table and stay there for a few minutes. And what you'll see is you'll see a strip in the table that actually is in focus and everything to the sides is out of focus. Now, why is this important? You don't have to have that to shoot good. You can aim good without that, but why is that important? Well, number one, confidence. I know that when I see that line, I am focused, and now it's just a matter of delivering the cue ball down that line, okay? Once I see it, all I have to do is deliver the cue ball down that line. So let's say you've got that Let's say you've got that tiny window you need to shoot through, right? Just big enough for the cue ball to make it through. You get that little tiny window. Well, you know what? If you're focused on the contact point and you get that line to show up, you can see if that line is running over the six or the nine, right? So it tells you I can shoot through that window or I can't. 
And by the way, this is not like a little tiny straight line. This is like a, a band, right? So I can look at this, I can say, hey, I can get through there. See? So this is my method of making balls. Has nothing to do with ghost ball, has nothing to do with center to edge or the angle method or the shoot through method or the lights method, um, which someday I'll show you because it's actually kind of cool. Uh, has nothing to do with any of those. All it is is find the contact point that with no English will send the ball into the pocket and then use that to pocket the ball. And, and when you focus on it, and it's not necessary to have that line appear, but I will tell you that if you are focused well enough that it does. And I've actually talked to Johnny Archer and a few other pros about it um, and mentioned, hey, you know, this is what happens when I'm playing well. Does this happen to you? And the answer has been universally all the time. I always see that. So I'm telling you, this is something you won't hear anybody talk about. A lot of people are going to call BS on it. Don't care. Works for me. Doesn't matter if it works for you or not. Um, but it's not some mystical, magical thing. It's not your brain figuring it out for you. What it actually is, is that you're so focused on the contact point that only things between your eyes and the contact point are in focus. And naturally, that's a, a small alley. And if you get that effect and you're focused on the correct contact point, you will make the ball if you send the cue ball down that path. So if you ever see that happen, take advantage of it, shoot the cue ball down that path. The problem with aiming is not that we can't aim. The problem is that we don't follow through. It's that we do other things that cause us not to do the shot that we're trying to aim. It has nothing to do with aiming. Anybody can aim. We have all seen I don't care what level player you are, you have seen that guy in the bar who's drunk off his tail, can barely stand up, but he's cutting in full length, full table length thin cuts like they're nothing. We've all seen it. We've seen the guy who barely can hold a cue, his stroke is the ugliest thing you've ever seen, but he pockets the balls. And the reason is because we all can aim, it's built into us, it's in our DNA. And once you, uh, once you understand that, you'll be more confident in your shots and confidence is much harder to, uh, to do right than aiming is. So confidence will cause you to miss shots. Okay, so how do you practice aim? Well, <clears throat> those of you who've been around the channel for a while know I'm not a fan of drills. Okay, drills put you in a bad place to begin with, especially if all you're trying to do is practice aim. Um, I don't like drills. Uh, I will typically do one of two things. So my very first thing I'll do, and you can kind of call it a drill, but it's not, is I just throw balls on the table. And I run them in rotation. Okay, so I run them in order. There's five balls. I make sure if I get a, a group or a problem ball, I'll go ahead and break it out and just move things around until I've got a wide open run of any type. And then I run them in order. Okay, so the second thing that I do, and this is what I recommend every single one of you do. This is the best practice in the world because it incorporates every single thing in the game of pool. It incorporates shooting, it incorporates leaves, it incorporates touch shots, uh, it incorporates kicks and banks and combinations and interactions off multiple balls. There is only one thing that does this. Straight pool. Take a rep. Set, set it up. Put a shot that's easy to break 
width out there, break them up and go. All right, so here's the thing about this. If you're practicing aim, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go ahead and shoot. And when you miss a ball, okay, I missed that one ball, right? So when you miss a ball, you're going to put that ball back and you're going to shoot, reshoot that same shot until you make it. Yes? And then you're going to continue on. And you're going to play by straightforward rules, which are shoot any ball you want, anywhere you want. It's all call the ball, call the ball, call the pocket. Um, and when you get down to the end of the rack, Ew. screwed that up. And don't don't worry about it if you miss. If you're not if you're not a really strong player and you miss some of these, it's okay. Just whenever you do miss, let's say I miss this three, right? Oh no, I missed. I'm going to set it back up about where it was. I'm just going to shoot it again and again and again until I make it. Now that's it. That's if your goal is to practice your aim. Okay. If, on the other hand, your goal is to practice leaves, okay, so that five, I would set that back up. I had a little bit less than center line on it, so I had to spin it to the right, set it up somewhere about where it was, reshoot the shot. Right? Okay, so now if I'm if I'm practicing leaves. So let's say my next shot, I'm planning to play this eight down here, so I want to shoot the four in, and I want to come off two, three, four rails, and just die somewhere down here for this eight. Okay, I didn't get there. Set it back up shooting. However, if I'm practicing this for leaves, and I miss the shot, I'm just going to play my lead from where I landed. I'm going to take the ball, I'm going to put it in the pocket, keep playing the lead because we're not, if your goal is to practice leaves, then it doesn't help you to reshoot shots. Unless, you, unless the reason you, you need to reshoot it is that you didn't get your lead and you know you should have. Okay, so Again, 14 goes down, shoot from in place. All right, so that's how you practice if you want to really get good at this game. Straight pool is an amazing game. Keep going through the rack. This will keep you from being bored. It'll keep your mind from wandering while you're shooting drills. I know that if I set up the box through, right? This is the one, um, it's a really famous drill actually. Uh, and this is the one where you have a ball there, 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 and there. And your goal is to get the cue ball to come back into a, a one diamond box in the center of the table. Uh, and you just shoot all of these and you, you continue to come back to the center of the table. Okay, some people like that drill. Let me tell you, 10 minutes of shooting this drill, I'm done. I'm not even paying attention. I don't care if I make the ball. I don't care if I get the lead. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Okay, my attention span for shooting the same shot over and over and over and over again is about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I'm done. I just can't do it. My mom, I, I'm thinking about other things. I'm thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch. I'm thinking about, you know, that girl I met the other day or whatever. But I'm not thinking about pool after 10 minutes of shooting the same shot over and over and over again. Spot shot drill? Never. It's a decent drill, but you just won't see me shoot it because I get bored. Well, I never get bored playing straight pool because there's always a problem to solve. There's always a challenge. There's always a shot that requires finesse. 
Um, there's always problem solving, and that keeps your mind busy. And it helps you in every single game. Straight fool is the way to practice the game. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you want to be great at the game, get great at straight pool. If you're great at straight pool, you'll be great at any game on the pool table. Everything in it applies to every game you could play on in pool. I don't care if it's one pocket, eight ball, nine ball, ten ball. Playing three ball, uh, three ball in a, a group game or cutthroat, doesn't matter. Straight pool will help your game immensely because you have to think about it. And the mental portion of the game is what's going to make or break your game. Okay? So, with that said, that's shot risk and aiming. Uh, we will come back with some other shot risks and some other mitigation. Uh, unfortunately, there is no way to get better at aim without just doing tons of practice and building muscle memory on the shots. Uh, there just isn't a better way. Anybody with aiming systems that is um, pitching that an aiming system is the best, way, best thing next to sliced bread, uh, I will tell you I've never used an aiming system. I've tried all of them. Um, the only one I used is when I was absolutely brand new at the game when I was less than 10 years old and it was ghost ball. Uh, that is the only one I've ever actually used for any length of time and I abandoned that once I realized that there comes a point where you're starting to put English on the ball and ghost ball no longer works the way you think it does. So the truth is Aiming systems are great when you're brand new at the game. Once you've started to learn, stop using aiming systems. Start doing, just stare at the contact point. Get focused to where you're starting to see that band of in focus cloth and everything else is fuzzy, which makes it look lighter in color. So on a, on a uh, uh, it kind of depends. So on a green table, uh, the line is lighter green than the outside green. Uh, and on a blue table, the blue is darker blue in the, down the alley and lighter blue on the outside. But you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? It will happen. Uh, if you play pool long enough, there will come a point where you'll start seeing these focus channels. And you'll start understanding that when you do see them and you roll the cue ball down that line, um, that it will hit the point that you're focused on on the object ball. Once you see that, and you, I know it sounds weird, when you see it, you're going to understand that, oh wow, that's what he was talking about. Now I know what that is. A lot of you A players out there, you've seen it and didn't recognize it. Um, it's and that recognition is key because once you recognize it, then you know that that's going to hit where you expect it to hit. If you stroke through and hit the ball straight like you're supposed to um, and stay down on the ball and all those other things that you have to do. But you're going to know that once, once you start seeing that, once you recognize that that's going to take you to the point that you're aiming at, it's going to help build your confidence in making that shot. So anyhow, if you like what you saw, hit like, hit subscribe, ding the notification bell. If you have questions, put them down in the comments. I always try to answer them. Uh, and with that, we'll catch you next time. It won't be that long.